Hello, I will be presenting my student art critique analysis using the artwork from Simon Norton Museum. Peter Paul Rubens, 1577 to 1640, was a towering figure in the Barco art, celebrated for his approach to painting. Born in Siegen Nassau, Dillenburg, now Germany, Rubens was a child of Jane Rubens and Maria Pipelings. His family, originally Antwerp citizens, had fled to Cologne in 1568 due to religious conflict in the Spanish Netherlands. After his father's death, Ruben family returned to Antwerp, and it was here that he was raised and his artistry began to flourish. One of his famous artwork is another biblical piece in the Holy Women at the Sepulchre by Peter Paul Rubens, executed sometimes between 1611 and 1614. The painting depicts a small group of women who have gathered at Christ's burial place to anoint his body. As described in Luke 24, 1-12, they arrive to discover the tomb empty. Two angel em angels emanating a radiant light relate to the news of Christ's resurrection. Rubens is known for his dynamic composition and the, and the use of line is essential in guiding the viewer's eyes through the painting. In this work, the lines created by the figure's gestures and the angels of the architecture, architectural element led to the center where the story unfolds. The curved line of the women's postures and the angels' outstretched arm create a sense of movement and urgency, which is fitting for a scene depicting the biblical event. The lines not only define the forms, but also contribute to the narrative tension, emphasizing the emotional intensity of the scene. Rubens' palette is rich and varied, demonstrating his mastery of color to evoke emotion and highlight the importance of the scene. The vivid red, blues, and greens of the women's garments stand out against the muted tones of the background, bringing the figures to the forefront and suggesting their significance. The contrast in the color also mirrors the contrast in the narrative between the mortal world and the divine as the angels appear in lighter, almost ethereal garments, distinguishing it from human figures. Light in Rubens' work often serve as a symbolic purpose as well as a practical one. The source of the light in the painting seems to be divine, coming from a direction of the angel, illuminating the scene with a heavenly glow. This, this ethereal light not only creates volume and depth, but also signifies the presence of the divine. The contrast of the light and the shadow further dramatizes the scene and draws attention to, to the expressions of awe and wonder of the women's faces, reinforces this miracle nature of the event. Through the interplay of line, color, and light, Reuben communicates the profound emotional and spiritual impact of the resurrection. The lines convey movement and tension. The colors differentiate the divine from earthly and express the emotional status of the character. And the light signifies the divine presence and the imbues the scene with a sense of hope and revelation. The, culture signifi the cultural significance of the painting lies in the ability to convey a pivotal moment in Christian narrative with a palpable intensity that transcends its time. It enriches our understanding of the world by recounting the human experience of encountering the divine. The struggle of comprehension in the face of the divinity, the divine entity, Rubens' skillful manipulation of artistic elements to, the, to evoke these th themes ensure the work's enduring impact on viewers across the generations. His work is admired and respected by a lot of people since not only he focused on religious painting but also focused on other mythologies. He did not seem to see a contradiction in immersing himself in both heavily religious themes and subjects from pagan classical mythology. This would have happened in keeping with his character as true as a Renaissance man who was also well versed in both traditions. He read widely and traveled widely. He was at home in the most sophisticated circles of European novelty, though he ironically sometimes expressed the state of the affected life of the courts on which he was never left dependent on as an artist and a diplomat. 
Next painting by Corrado Jequanto, 1703-1766. He was an Italian Rocco painter whose vibrant and emotive works have been graced the walls of many churches and palaces. Born in Malfetta in, in the Aquila region of Italy, Jacquanto began his artistic journey in the Neapolitan workshops, where he trained under Francisco Salimana, one of the most prominent Barco artists of the time. Solomena's influence is evident in Jacquanto's early work, which already sh showcased a flair for the dramatic and keen eye of the color. For the color, Jacquanto composition is built upon a framework of lines that guides the viewer's focus toward the central act of marriage. The vertical and horizontal lines formed by the architecture in the background provide a stable structure against which the scene unfolds. The circular arrangements of the figures. A common motive in the depictions of sacred events symbolizes unity and eternity for marriage. The lines of the figure's garment are perfectly fit for the sac sacrament of marriage, as mentioned in Norton Simon's description. Corrado Jacquento championed a style characterized by sumptuous color, exquisite surface finish, and decorative appeal. In 17 1862, he embarked on the decoration of the new sacristy of the Church of San Luigi di Pazza Naples, in which this marriage of the Virgin figured symbolizes throughout the composition referred to the Virgin pious nature, including the star woven into the carpet in which she, she stands, and the gold-plated wooden chest above the altar, which statuates the marriage right in the Temple of Jerusalem. Joseph gently places a ring on a finger of her right hand. The flowering staff in his left hand foretells his role as the earthly father of Jesus. In this classicizing composition, with its emphasis on the expressive statue figures of Mary Joseph and Joseph, at the moment of their union, Jacquanto has embodied the devotional quality and formal stability of the Italian grand manner. The color scheme in the marriage of the Virgin is subtle yet purposeful. The Virgin Mary is a typical adorned in blue, a color representing purity and heavenly grace, which is clearly visible here, ensuring she is immediately recognizable. Joseph traditionally depicted with a road flowering to, his, to signify his divine selection as Mary's spouse, is portrayed in an earthly tones that ground him in humility and humanity. The use of color not only differentiates the characters, but also highlights their roles in the divine narrative. Light in this painting appears to descend from above, bathing the central figures in a soft glow that suggests a heavenly approval of the union. This divine illumination draws the viewer's eye to the joining of hands between Mary and Joseph, the focal point of the composition, the way of the light falls creates a sense of depth, volume, and bringing a three-dimensionality to the figures and making the scene more like uh, lifelike and immediate. The interplay of the line, color, and light in Jacquento's painting creates a work that transcends its era, inviting the viewer into a moment of timeless sanctity. This, uh, the structured lines provide order and stability. The harmonious colors convey purity and humanity, and the celestial light implies the divine presence overseeing and blessing the union. This painting enriches our understanding by offering a window into the sacred and spiritual, emphasizing the sanctity of marital union and the divine plan with Abraham, Abrahamic doctrine. Through these artist elements, Jacquento conveys the significance of faith the honor of the divine selection and the beauty of sacred tradition. The cultural re resonance, resonance of the marriage of the Virgin li lies in its ability to connect us to these universal themes and invite reflection on deeper meaning of commitment and divine guidance in our lives.